so these days everybody focuses on the it plants but do you want to have a peek at some of my plants that you might not see that often in here and i can talk you through my thoughts on them because some of these plants at least in my humble opinions deserve a bit more of the spotlight Hi, my name is Memo, this is my channel House Planty Goodness, and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion. You might be able to see some of it behind me, it's tropical houseplants. So today I wanted to focus on something a bit different. So a lot of the times we're all kind of used to seeing very similar plants online, everybody's it plants and this is the plant that everybody's into at the moment or this plant has been in favour with a lot of people for a very long time but actually there's a lot of plants that maybe don't come up as often either in conversation or online and I really do think that a lot of these plants actually do have something to offer whether it's interesting growth it might be speed of growth it might be just an unusual appearance but without further ado let me show you some of the plants that you might not see very often on my channel but still hold a very dear place in my heart so for a change i thought i would start off with something i guess some people might call this a succulent some people might call it a cactus I cannot remember the scientific term, so I'll kind of put it at the top there, but this is the crown of thorns. And you might be able to see if I switch it around as to why it is called what it is called. Now, this is a plant that might not seem very interesting or exciting to a lot of people. However, stick with me and I'll tell you the reasons why this has stayed a firm favorite for me at least. Now the sentimental, I'll get the sentimental reason out first. This is a plant that, <laughs> there's a story, um, I tried bringing back a few cuttings from a mum's plant that she has got growing on her balcony in Athens and this plant if I give you an indication, if this is the pot of my plant, her pot is probably about, <laughs> I don't know, probably about five litre pot. It's absolutely huge. It takes up most of the table. This is also sprawling on hers. It's always in bloom and it looks glorious. And it pretty much stays on the balcony, at least in Greece, year round. So if you're on the slightly warmer, more arid locations, or maybe somewhere around the Mediterranean, that might be an interesting one for you to have outside in your balcony. I wouldn't necessarily have it out in full sun or fully exposed to the elements, but if you've got something like a balcony or a veranda or anything like that, this might be an interesting one to have. But hers was absolutely huge. I did my research online kind of going, ooh, how do I propagate this? And how do I do this in a way that it works? <laughs> I tried for nearly a year and at some point when I gave up and this was a good few years back now this is not my mother's propagation basically I, I went and bought <laughs> my own version of the plant because that failed miserably but a year later there was no roots the plant hadn't died it looked a bit peaky towards the end of it but I'm just thinking this is really resilient in terms of how much the plant will keep going it kept bringing out leaves it kept bringing out blooms it just hadn't done anything it was just a stick that was surviving <laughs> so resilient is the word really but i did find uh, a local plant shop and i've talked about i'm trying to think now i think i probably mentioned them before and it's turn it tropical basically and it's locally based around here carl is one of the nicest people the person who runs this is named carl and this is not sponsored by the way very rarely do any i don't think i've ever done any sponsored videos ever but yeah he is one of the most genuinely nicest people and he's also very knowledgeable about plants in general and he's always specialized in kind of tropicals basically so he happened to have a multi set of this this wasn't a particularly expensive plant there was a white form there was a pink form and there was a blush form and i don't know i think the blush might be the only one that hasn't really survived but these were tiny they were probably only about yay big as much as this maybe a tiny bit bigger 
and there was three of them and it's I've had this plant nearly three years now so it's not the fastest growing thing whilst I wobble it around it's not the fastest growing thing but it is growing in semi-hydro at the moment because I just couldn't figure out what exactly it wanted in terms of soil but I am growing this pretty much as I would do any other succulent not cactus so this still does get watered in the winter I'm trying to see yeah it doesn't absorb water super fast I think this is one of the plants that maybe gets watered currently in the winter months uh, I would say once a month so I'm not not a hugely water demanding plant and even in the depths of winter I do get blooms and I do also in the summer as well but this is one that if you do get its care completely right and it's not particularly hard I don't know why I'm struggling with it as much as I can considering that my mother probably doesn't do anything special to it um, this is one that will reward you with blooms they don't smell of anything but it's kind of interesting to look at and I do love the common name for this it's very much what the what it says on the tin basically crown of thorns and yeah very very cool plant but not an awful lot of people talk about this and it's it's a shame the next plant is something that probably would be considered a bit of um rare philodendron it's not one that you would see very often i'm kind of the reason why my memory kind of jogged a bit with this as well because it's one that i'm really enjoying i'm pointing at it i will show you in just a second it was something that equigenera posted about on their profile this week just gone and they had a massive version and i'm still going i'm so proud look at how big i'm growing mine mm. <laughs> nothing like watching or seeing really mature forms of a plant that you have to kind of really humble you and go oh i've got a way to go still <laughs> this is very similar to like with the esmeraldense behind me like that is quite mature looking and like, even if i look at it being grown by growers in a mature form it's similar in size probably a bit bigger but it's sizable this one is and i'll show you sorry stuff me waffling around it's very very difficult to show up properly on the screen i'll see if i can kind of hide my face so you might be able to see and i will show you the entire plant and there's even a new leaf right there and i will show you the back of that leaf because it is interesting i didn't realize and there's a new leaf coming in currently so this for the people that might have never seen one before is the philodendron sharonii sharonii sharona i don't know basically pronunciation with latins is always fun and if i remember correctly i think i saw that this was named after um a scientist that maybe had done quite a bit of work on this specific plant sometimes it's called the sharonii goat i think or maybe that's a different version of the plant i mean that's the oldest leaf and that this was one of the leaves that came with the plant when i first got it from equigenera in an unboxing and i will link the video for that unboxing at the top there if you haven't seen it and you do want to watch it but it's doing really well it is in the smallest pot of semi-hydro it gets watered as if it was in soil it's very rarely if ever i don't think it's ever had um a water reservoir at the bottom i'm kind of looking at it <laughs> a lot of my clear pots are covered in moss basically so very rarely can i actually see the roots but none of the roots are popping out from the bottom so I, can't, I wouldn't imagine they are particularly aggressive at rooting but based on how happy the plant is on the top and this sits at the very top of some of my plant shelves it used to be up the top there it now sits behind the camera at the very top so it gets battered with light and it does not miss a beat and it is they were saying the same thing so um equigenera was saying the same thing it's a plant that not a lot of people are kind of aware of a lot of the time and it's a shame because actually hmm i don't know if i'd kind of claim it yes i think i will this is possibly one of my least fussy and easiest philodendrons to grow so that should tell you something um it, it does grow <laughs> quite tall it's not necessarily lanky the leaves don't do the full drop that you might get with the esmeral dense where they are fully kind of long and down they do have a slight kink to them i don't know if you can kind of notice that shape there and it is top down lighting so it might be why they are kind of moving a bit so for instance if i had it against a window and the light was coming in this way maybe they would all be kind of fully drop down i think they can grow that way but just a plant that 
I'm surprised more people don't talk about. I don't think this was particularly expensive. If I do find the price, I will add it somewhere. But yeah, a very, very cool plant. If you ever come across it and you want kind of an easy philodendron that has a bit of an impact, then when I say, I thought the leaves were getting big because they were getting long. <laughs> On the Equigenero website, the, some of the leaves were much bigger. They were almost full body height. So this can get absolutely stinking huge. Would it potentially get a bit more mature leaves if it was on a moss pole? Possibly. However, I am experimenting a bit again with moss poles, even though I did my video that <laughs> caused a lot of consternation with a lot of people uh, when I was talking about my views at that point with moss poles. I have always claimed that prove me wrong and I can prove myself wrong and I'm more than happy to eat humble pie. But um, I am trying something new with my moss poles at the moment based on a lot of the comments that I got from a lot of you basically, which is not using exclusively kind of sphagnum moss as a substrate in my kind of D-shaped moss poles and using kind of more of a soil mix. So I will put this down and I will show you what I'm using actually, mainly because I spent some time yesterday making these in preparation to using them. I've done a few now, so if it goes wrong, it's just wasted a bit of time, but it's winter. We've got time to potter around. So the usual kind of D shape with the plastic at the bottom. I know some people have asked me, I use overhead projector film. That's the plastic that I use. And then obviously that you get the lattice work. So I'll bring it in a bit closer so you might be able to see if I hide my face. Hopefully it will focus. Um, you might be able to see it's just a soil mix. It's a very airy soil mix. And what I've done is just put a layer of sphagnum moss at the top, layer of sphagnum moss right at the bottom. This is the bottom. <laughs> so I've kind of packed it in quite heavily with sphagnum moss at the bottom. This would then have the janky support sticks within it just to give it some stability because Unlike Sydney plant guy, I'm not doing this whilst I'm repotting, which means that I can bury part of this in there. I'm going to have to do it like this for now. And when I repot at that point, I will kind of readjust it so that the actual moss pole is sitting within the soil level, basically. So it gives it a lot more stability. I've done it for one or two of my plants and I'm just like, oh, I see what the hype is about now. But for now, because I cannot do that, I'm doing it this way. And I'm trying to see if this is going to work a bit better because I know from a lot of the times with my kind of my soil mix, it will retain moisture a lot more than just regular damp sphagnum moss. This might all be rubbish and I might be proven wrong yet again, but we shall see. So I am trying this and I'm probably going to do that for that plant at some point soon. And now onto a plant that I recently got, which is, <laughs> this is going to be very difficult to film. This is, and it's looking very like the, the blooms are looking a bit busted at the moment, but that is on its way out, as is this one here, basically. So this lovely plant, if you might be able to see, oh, nice turgid leaves. This is the Mendelina Magnificum, or Magnifica, basically. So I think it's common name. I'll see if I can add it at the top. I cannot remember what the common name of this is at the moment. It's something orchid, potentially, or false orchid, or something like that is one that I've been wanting to add to my collection for a while, and I'm quite glad I finally got it now. So the interesting thing with this, and I've only gone on to what I've seen from the internet, and I did repot it into an Aroid tower, basically, just because I want to be able to see the, the roots and I wanted to be more specific about the soil mix that I've used. So the soil mix that I've used for this specific plant is one from Soil Ninja, and it is their orchid and anthurium one so it's exceptionally airy and everything that i could see about this plant online was saying that it's got relatively fine roots it's another one of those that would do really well with something like an orchid mix or even something like an anthurium mix it needs i think a bit more moisture than your average kind of phalaenopsis orchid but it also doesn't like to be sapping wet for too long so something quite like and chunky would do really well for this so so far i've not had it for an awful lot of time so i might have to chew my words at some point so far it's doing okay the problem about the blooms because a lot of the times these are sold as they are i'd ordered this online in the depths of some of the coldest days here in the uk before 
uh, a bit before Christmas, basically. And this arrived on a day that it was, I think, minus three. And I was fully expecting for it either to die off entirely or to throw the biggest wobbly hissy fit. It was even stuck with the courier for an extra day because they were struggling to get everything out to everybody. So even so, I've still managed to retain some of the blooms that came with the plant. But for me, I think this is one that more people should be aware of because even when these blooms are gone, and I'm not going to lie, like you can see I'm struggling to where to put this. This is going to be an interesting plant in terms of placement. It's very specific in that it would probably need very similar conditions to what I would have for a lot of my orchids. These are very, very stiff, turgid leaves. They're not quite as succulent as you would get from a Phalaenopsis orchid, but with this plant, you do get, I think, at least in my humble of opinions, you do get that kind of similar vibe that you might get from the ficus lyrata or the fiddle leaf fig, basically. It's that kind of big, unctuous leaf. It doesn't have the, the kind of shape that you would get necessarily with the ficus lyrata, but not too dissimilar and this one grows a bit slower granted if you need something that's going to become a tree go for something like the fiddle leaf fig i tried years back to grow one it just wasn't for me i'm generally not great with ficuses at the best of times and i think that's not one of the easy ones but this is giving very similar kind of large leaf paddly leaves paddly roundish leaves i don't know um vibes but so far for me it has seemed so much easier basically some of the cosmetic damage that you're seeing around the leaves was because it arrived a bit battered not the retailer's fault at all i think it was just too cold it got it stuck in posts and all these things but really really enjoying this really really cool plant very difficult to show you but very very cool plant nonetheless the the stems are really interesting as well if you like looking at weird morphologies of plants the stems on these are rectangular so hopefully i might be able to get this to focus if i do that you can see there's a bit of corking on either side you can see it's quite thin there it's kind of it's like i would imagine if you cut it in the middle it's just a rectangle it's very very interesting and very very cool it's not round but yeah, a plant that not an awful lot of people talk about. There's no, I don't think there's that many videos online about this. I will not be adding a care video for this anytime soon. If this is still in my care in six months to a year later, and I think I've got the care for it down, I will do a video as well and just add one to the ether that is Mendelina videos on YouTube. I'm pretty sure I have butchered the name, but yeah, very cool plant. The next couple of plants are going to look a bit busted and I've got thoughts and words to say about them basically. So the first one is a Raphidophora, although this has been hotly debated. I think it was also at some point thought to be a philodendron. I'll bring it in so you might be able to see. I will put what I am assuming is the correct botanical name at the top. It might still be under debate, so I will kind of put what I assume is correct basically. But this is also called the philodendron dragon. It's not a philodendron. I'm pretty sure it's not a philodendron. I've got this as a raphidophora, and I cannot remember. Is it raphidophora decursiva? It might be that, basically. But very, very cool leaves. But you can see when they're juvenile leaves, they're a lot smaller. They're kind of more kind of standard, almost green pothos type leaves. They are very thick and succulent. This is almost the more juvenile leaves are very reminiscent of the Raphidophora hongongensis, basically, that I've got at the back there. But this is one that I got and it's grew for quite a while. I will show you the substantial rootage of this plant. And hopefully that will focus. There you go, you can kind of see there through the pot. Now, thoughts on this plant. So you might be able to see here just a very long stem of very little happening. And you can see that some of it I'm kind of growing at soil level where it was before. I have not grown this the way that I think it needs to grow. So this is a plant that a few people on a few other videos have mentioned about obligate climbers. And these are climbers that need plants that are climbers that need something to attach to in order to climb, i.e. 
the moss poles that we were just talking about a moment ago. Do I think this is one of those? I think so. So you can see I've kind of added janky support sticks. It's got substantial roots coming out of each one of the nodes, but it's not bringing me out leaves as often as all that. Granted, this is a plant that I have seen in the winter really does slow down to kind of almost hibernate and do very, very little. But I do enjoy this. I will say it looks a bit busted at the moment because it's been through a lot. It's been through a lot. It used to be here. It was very, very happy here. It's now moved upstairs to my bathroom. It's kind of happy there. But mm, I also to revive this black, black, remi revived it back, back, not black. Oh. I was thinking black because the roots are black, because it had root rot. And this is a plant that, that is the big thing that I would say about this. One, I do think it needs a moss pole in order for it to look quite impressive. And it can get even more fenestrations, if I'm not mistaken, on the leaves. I'm trying to remember now, it had got some even more mature leaves than just these before it kind of struggled with the root rot. But root rot with this is real. At least it has been in my experience. I had it in semi hydro. It was doing okay. And then nothing particularly changed. The season didn't even change, which usually catches me off guard. And it, it threw wobbly and then lost half of its roots. And it, it will go through root rot really quickly with this plant. It will develop exceptionally fast. But at the same time, this is a plant that really, at least in my experience, I found really dislikes going fully dry. So, <laughs> and the roots, I don't know how to describe the roots. The roots have almost got like, whenever I look at them, they've got a lot of fuzziness that is happening around them. So I do think this is very much an, a kind of an obligate climber where some of these roots would be kind of exposed a bit more to kind of high humidity levels. I would imagine this might be cloud forest based on that. So uh, I get why this wasn't, this didn't become the quintessential Raphidophora and the Raphidophora tetrasperma became that because, and I will say this about that specific Raphidophora, so the Raphidophora tetrasperma, or what people call the mini monstera, even though it's not a monstera, out of a lot of the Raphidophoras, how many times can I say that word in a <laughs> in one section? It is the hardiest I find, and it just keeps on trucking on basically. This one it will challenge you, but if you do get its care right and you get it happy, it is a very rewarding plant. It kind of gives I don't want to say Monstera, the flame Monstera, Burley Mark's flame quite, but mm, I don't think it's that dissimilar basically. And it's a much cheaper and much easier plant to find generally. Interestingly, the I think it's the Burley Mark's flame Monstera is very slow, slow growing in order to fenestrate. This one fenestrates faster or gets the splits faster from the juvenile leaf to the kind of slightly more mature leaf but it's still very, very slow plant. So this might not be for everybody, but I do really enjoy this. This plant still brings me a lot of joy. Will I probably be cutting it back again and maybe trying it with a moss pole at a lower level, especially when the summer comes in? Probably, and I'll see how I get on with that, basically. But if you've got any experiences with this specific plant and yours is absolutely huge, I know a lot of people do have success with this, do let me know down below what you might suggest I might be doing wrong or something to try. I'll be more than happy to try it for this plant. Right, and uh, wrapping up with a schismatoglossus. <laughs> I'm going to have a lot to say about this. I did get this a while back, I think, from um, a Grow Tropical purchase. And I'm trying to remember if I did a video, if I did a video on that purchase, I will put it at the top there. Did I really enjoy growing this plant so far? Mm, kind of. <laughs> I do think it's a truly stunning plant. You might also look at this now and just go, this is looking like a third of the plant that you used to have. Yes, I have had root rot on this plant four times, five times now. <laughs> This is an interesting one because even on most of the websites, and by the way, the plant that came from Grow Tropicals was spectacular. There is no shade on them at all, basically. I've seen that this is an issue that people have experienced. And I think Claire on Good Growing did a video on schismatoglossus care. And I was really curious and I watched that kind of video and I'm just like, mm-hmm, yep, yep, yep. I agree with all of these things. So if you've not seen that video on Claire's channel, do hop over and have a look at that. I'll link it down in the description below as well. But very, very cool plants. They're all very, very interesting. 
but so far my experiences with this and based on what I'm seeing on a few other people's it's giving Calathea vibes it, it's giving that level of kind of exact needs because they they want a lot of water and they can be very thirsty but they also don't want a lot of water because they will go towards root rot and that's why i have it in an aroid pot so i can see the roots and i can actually see where the uh root rot is happening but very similar to calathea's on this it's got usually one root and i'll sh think hopefully it might focus i don't know if it's going to be light enough for you to see but m maybe there you can kind of see that and it's <laughs> It's not a plant that I would want to mess with the roots too much. It's similar to the Calatheas that if you start taking it out to take off the root rot, you will invariably lose more than half of the roots, even some of the healthy roots, in order to get that off. So I've kind of left it. I've dried it a few times. It's a, and it doesn't look that great anymore. This plant looked spectacular when I first got it. Some people might be growing this in Ikea cabinets and things like that. Do I think I'm going to give up that much space? I don't have an Ikea cabinet, but if I had an Ikea cabinet, would I give this much space of it? Because it's quite a wide plant as well. Just for this plant? I don't know if I would. Some people might. And no shade of that at all, basically. But I do like this plant. And I really, really want to like this Gizmatoglossus. But as I said, it's giving Calathea vibes. And I've been being a bit blunt, some of the Calathea leaves are much more interesting than these. These are very interesting leaves, don't get me wrong, and some of them are a bit more silvery, and there's more of these coming onto the market, and I'm so, so happy we do need to see more of a variety than just the Anthuriums, the Syngoniums, the Monstera, the Philodendrons. It's good to have the variety. But I don't know whether or not this specific Schismatoglossus is more difficult and there's ones that are easier, but I don't know if there are. I think these are plants that need something really specific. I probably haven't done enough research on this. It means that I wasn't head over heels over it to do a deep dive. If you know kind of something that it really likes, I should really do a bit more research on its uh, native habitat, which I've preached about on this channel long enough. And maybe that might give me an indication as to the conditions that this needs to grow in order to be happy. But for the payoff and for how quickly it can throw a wobbly and throw a hissy fit and lose leaves, do I think this is worth it right now, if I'm being honest? No. For me. For me. For me, for me, for me, for me. I always say in these videos, for me, it's... Mm, it's okay. It's okay. I always try with some of these plants to just go, I need something that's giving me Calathea vibes that isn't a Calathea, but it seems that anything with Calathea vibes tends to be like a Calathea, so... Mm. But yeah, those are some of my plants that you might not see very frequently on my channel and my kind of thoughts behind them. Have you got any of these plants? Would you like another video? I've got loads of plants that you probably don't see that often because of where they might be kind of located either within this space or within the house. I have heard you all when I was doing the kind of planty chores or kind of watering around my plants that you would want a bit more of a house tour that is a coming. I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to do it so it's not a three hour long video but it is coming I promise and you'll probably see some more of these plants that you don't see that often on my channel. Annoyingly also realized when I was filming that and editing it that I'm just like oh, I, I, I've lost the use of that device that I could kind of move around so you could kind of see a bit more because of the new camera. I will be getting a new one of those but that's in the hundreds of pounds so that's going to be happening not in January. Um, I realized I could have actually placed it somewhere kind of in the doorway coming into the conservatory and you probably would get a bit more of a view. I might try that on one of my other videos and see what you guys think as just that I've got so comfortable with where things are with this and where lights are so you don't get like a light in in the shot but I will figure it out and see about changing up the the scene for some of the future videos but yeah hopefully you've enjoyed hopefully I shall see you here soon and I truly truly hope that you have a great rest of your day thanks bye